Yo, yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Angry Yuri, and today I got a new video for you guys. And basically, today we're gonna be talking about WebGL, FreeJS, and BabylonJS. Right? Let's get to it. Right? So, basically, what is WebGL, what is Babylon, and what is 3JS? Right? Let's explore that. And then we'll explore the next points. So, WebGL is basically a graphics library with JavaScript that requires basically just a canvas to render a context to it. So basically, through the rendering context and the canvas, you can basically render 3D and 2D graphics. So that is basically what WebJL is. There's also something called WebGPU. You can also learn more about it in the Mozilla Developer Web Documentation. All right, let's right now check out what is 3JS. And also you can check out if your browser supports WebJL or not. And by the way, also, when I mentioned WebGPU, I was talking about also as well WebGL because WebGL and WebGPU can utilize GPU in the website. So basically, if you have a decent GPU, you can also as well use yeah. that to test out the websites I'm going to be talking about today using hardware acceleration. Some websites use WebGL, some websites use WebGPU. All right, let's get to 3JS right now. So 3JS is a pretty cool JavaScript that 3 a 3D framework basically it's based upon WebGL. Uh, the only difference between something like 3JS and Babylon is that Babylon has like more advanced tools. 3JS has like for the uh, editor over here that you could use in the browser. There's a lot of examples lot. that you could use in 3JS, and you could expect that it's going to be a little bit extensive to understand something like 3JS or Babylon JS. You have to understand a lot of uh, things like basically in this like example i'm showing you there's an avatar over here that has animations that surrender to the geometry of the body basically or the structure of the like the dummy that we have over here so using something like blender or mix ammo for example you can add animations to it so there's a lot of stuff that you could do with 3js but like i said the only limitation with 3js as the TypeScript support, there's no native TypeScript support. There is a community package for it. However, it's not the official 3JS TypeScript. And also as well, if you check out the code that I'm checking on the screen right now, you can see that it can be optimized and it can be simplified actually in terms of its examples. It does not require it to be complex as possible, but yeah. it's just it's some situations where it's gonna be basically a complex for any 3JS framework, all right? So Babylon.js is also another JavaScript 3D framework, but Babylon.js, the only difference is that you have more options in terms of TypeScript, so you can optimize it better if you'd like of optimization. So I haven't tested Babylon.js myself. I have tested 3JS, but I have tested uh, the examples that they have on their website, and it was pretty cool, to be honest. Uh, there was like a web AL game over here it's called space pirates and there's a lot of stuff that basically you can do with 3js or babylon js it depends on your use case situation if you do want to use typescript uh, there is also an article that mentions why uh, babylon js basically for the 3d project it's because of typescript support so that if that's a feature that you need then go with babylon js however both libraries have their advantages and disadvantages uh, also babylon js does provide better debugging tools. However, in terms of 3JS, it has more community support. So Babylon.js as well can be a little bit uh, steep in the learning curve and also 3JS in any uh, 3D web framework. Um, you have to understand something like the coordinate system that I'm showing you over here. You can see me moving the X axis and the, I'm gonna move right now the Z axis. So basically we're talking about the vertical and horizontal and depths. Like 3D, basically it's a three dimension. So depth, as you can see, Z axis for depths. The red one is X axis for horizontal, and the top one is for the Y axis, the vertical. And it can be used with 3JS, as you can see, it's the same coordinate system. So X, Y, V, for example, to use this point light in 3JS. Let's right now check out performance, and which is another step that might actually be hindering the the uh, like development process is that PCs require a lot of uh, resources. It does require a lot of resources. So I tested out this the gallery website, which has a lot of optimized resources, and it's a pretty good uh, 3JS website. It's pretty popular. Um, so as you could see, 
on my computer the uh, limiting factor in terms of 3js is basically the ram it's utilizing 2.5 gigabytes of ram that might not seem a lot for an average like gamer or an average video editor but for an average mobile user which is mostly where people go on websites that's not the average like for example on steam the average user's computer is around 16 gigabytes but that's for gaming while in terms of something like mobile worldwide uh, there's a reference going to put which says basically this is for gigabytes for ram smartphone and here it is in front of the screen so most phones use four gigabytes while operating software takes about like 1.5 gigabytes so 2.5 gigabytes and 1.5 gigabytes of ram would basically bottleneck your ram so i tried this other website as well so i could check out the objects usage in the website it basically took around 20 megabytes and this website was optimized as well and bear in mind both of these videos actually were sped up a lot like they were sped out uh, to 150 percent for each video and as you can see on the screen right now the total bytes is around 20 megabytes used in terms of the array buffer and what's rendered actually in terms of objects so basically it's still not the best option for somebody using a 4g connection a 4 gigabyte mo mobile there are some examples where there's really optimized like ikea but again it for the average user this might might not be like the best use case scenario but something like ikea or personal portfolio like bruno simons which is optimized a lot and make actually a 3d website really good the really good thing about the ikea website is that they have the design model and if you go out actually as well into the developer uh, tools you can check out actually what they do if you go into each product page the product page is basically going to be rendering a image as you can see over here on the left and then when you select a 3d model it renders that 3d model so it lowers the request to the back end and makes the application more efficient so again uh, here's a time lapse of me basically just building up the room using the ikea 3d modeler and this is one of the best use case scenarios for it all right so conclusion basically 3d websites have potential but they require significant development efforts and resources hardware and requirements and optimization challenges might limit the widespread options and finally advances in hardware more recently like the arm processors that are releasing out may actually improve 3d web experiences in the future so it took me 67 objects to be added to court to actually make the website lag and 100 objects to make the website crash bear in mind this can differ from computer to computer and that is pretty much it you guys so again this can be optimized like i said as you can see something like ikea but it requires a lot of effort or resources which may bring up the costs so tell me what you guys think about this video and your comments about 3.js webgl libraries and babylon.js i'll see you guys in the next video this was angry video and peace you guys